Hello and welcome to the 2023 ELE Comp Capstone Design Program Online Summit. My teammate Jayron and I are excited to share our project, which is sponsored by Hayward Industries. Our technical director is Russell Buckley. He's a testing engineering manager at Hayward and he also holds two degrees from URI. My name is Beckett. I'm a computer engineering major. My partner is Jayron Gonzalez. He's an electrical engineering major. To provide a little bit of background about Hayward, they're an international company that's based in North Kingston, Rhode Island. They design products that range from their revolutionary salt chlorination systems to light fixtures and smart enabled controller interfaces. With clients ranging from families to worldwide resorts, if you know someone with a pool, there's a good chance they're using Hayward products. Now I'd like to provide some background on the device which we are targeting with this project. The VS Omni controller acts as a hub for controlling the lighting, temperature, and even maintenance of pools fitted with Hayward systems. It's a full computer system that's based around an ARM microprocessor, and it has a touchscreen. It's also used outdoors, so it must be able to withstand harsh conditions without compromising performance. Thus, it is of the utmost importance that every controller that leaves the factory is well tested and free from any operating defects. This device is complex, which can make it troublesho troublesh the troubleshooting process for malfunctioning units challenging and time consuming. Currently, it can take up to four and a half minutes for the entire system to be booted for the first time. So Hayward seeks a way to quickly deploy and run all the tests to verify that each controller is functioning properly before flashing the production firmware and operating system. Unfortunately, even comprehensive circuit testing methods may not catch issues which happen when the device is running, meaning firmware and software can sometimes be the only oppor opportunity for determining the source of a failure. The anticipated best, in, out, best outcome of this project is a firmware diagnostic suite, which can target every component or subsystem on the VS Omni. And to indicate the scope involved, I've included a simplified block diagram of the microprocessor's I.O. We've also discovered that we'll need a hardware interface with the v, to interface with the VS Omni. And it, Hello and welcome to the 2023 ELE Comp Capstone Design Program Online Summit. My teammate Jaron and I are excited to share our project, which is sponsored by Hayward Industries. Our technical director is Russell Buckley. He's the test engineering manager at Hayward, and he also holds two degrees from URI. My name is Beckett. I'm a computer engineering major. My partner is Jaron, and he's an electrical engineering major. To give some background on Hayward Industries, they're an international company based in North Kingston, Rhode Island. They design products that range from their revolutionary salt chlorination systems to light fixtures and smart enabled control interfaces. With clients ranging from families to worldwide resorts, if you know someone with a pool, there's a good chance they're using Hayward products. To provide some background on the VS Omni, which is the target device of this project, this device acts as a hub for controlling the lighting, temperature, and even maintenance of pools fitted with Hayward systems. It's a full computer system based around an ARM microprocessor and it has a touchscreen and a full operating system. It's also used outdoors, so it must be able to withstand harsh conditions without compromising performance. Thus, it is of the utmost importance that every controller that leaves the factory is well tested and free from any operating defects. This device is complex, which can make the troubleshooting process for malfunctioning units challenging and time consuming. Currently, it can take up to four and a half minutes for the entire system to be booted for the first time. So Hayward seeks a way to quickly deploy and run all the tests to verify that each controller is functioning properly before flashing the production firmware and operating system. Unfortunately, even comprehensive in-circuit testing methods may not catch issues which happen when the device is running meaning firmware and software can sometimes be the only op option for determining the source of a failure. The anticipated best outcome of this project is a firmware diagnostic suite which can target every component or subsystem on the VS Omni. And to indicate the scope involved, I've included a simplified doc a block diagram of the microprocessor's I.O. We've also discovered that we will need hardware to interface with the VS Omni, and we'll provide more details about that later in this presentation. Since this project is ultimately going to be used in a manufacturing environment, we also need to remain aware of data integrity. And I'd like to talk a little bit about the team technical achievements to date. The first is system discovery, 
We've been diving into the data sheets and reference manuals for all of the ICs and components on each of these boards. And from them, we've taken many valuable things away, in both, both in terms of our approach to this project and the discovery process for future projects. We've also made sure to pre precisely define our requirements and functional specification so that the code development process can be streamlined and the firmware remains well documented. We also worked to describe the overall system architecture, which as you will see in the following slides, became a much larger part of the project than initially anticipated. We've also done a significant amount of PCBA modification, and in this photo, you can see JRON soldering pins to test points so that we can connect a NORFLASH programmer to the VS Omni. Finally, we've also done some tool chain setup so that we can make sure that we can both deploy, build and deploy the most up-to-date versions of the code, which will help in the future for regression testing and collaborative development. The economic impact of this project for the company could be great. Shorter assembly times allow not only for more products to be manufactured on a given day, but also can make products cheaper, especially in lieu of the troubleshooting time, which is spent in defective, on defective devices. Not to mention the added overhead costs involved with the scrap that can be produced when a failing component can't be found until long after many potentially functional components have been replaced and discarded. Looking broadly, we see this project as an opportunity to help Russell and the Hayward Test Engineering team expand their ability to test more intricate computer systems in the company's product catalog and thus reduce overhead on those as well. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about my individual technical contributions. I was looking at a lot of different options for deploying the code. Uh, ultimately we settled on the SD, but we also want to keep open the opportunity to use NORFLASH. And as you will see, code development or code deployment rather, has been one of the largest challenges with this project. I also prototyped the firmware control flow. So I took the drivers and header files for the necessary elements of design and built the structure of the design itself on those. Additionally, one of the best tools at our disposal has been U-Boot, which is an open source bootloader which I've been able to use to examine different aspects of the startup process. Whenever I'm working on a project like this, which will take place over a long period of time, I like to break it down into individual technical challenges which need to be overcome in order to achieve the best result. The first of these technical challenges with this project is tooling. The microprocessor used on this system was first released in 2010, so many of the tools originally used to compile designs and deploy binary images for it are no longer available or buried beneath a mountain of deprecated software tools. Because of this, we had to collaborate with another of the test engineers, or rather the engineers who had previously worked on the design, and he gave us a lot of great insights as to how we could move forward with the project. This showed us that collaboration is key, but also that it's very important to create documentation of your workflow as you move through a project. Our second tech technical challenge that we I faced is figuring out some thorough testing methodologies. This firmware needs to be flexible. Ideally, it needs to allow a programmer to write a software program which can use a firmware commands to sequence tests or to target specific components. Of course, this is only good if the diagnostic information which is returned to the user is meaningful and complete. This can be a challenge since one of the goals of this project is to be lightweight and quick. Data integrity. As mentioned, the device under test is subject to a significant amount of noise or potential interruption on the production floor. So we've implemented a protocol which can make sure that dropped or corrupted data packets in between the host computer and the device don't trigger false negative failures. We intended to use the VS Omni controllers themselves as our development boards for this project. Also because the SD card is the fastest way to boot the device, we decided to use that as our boot media. We determined that the build environment for the firmware and decided on how we wanted to use to structure the code. We had made sure that we could follow the steps to boot the system and we got what you see on the screen. What you're looking at is a timeout on the data lines of the SD card reader shown through the terminal emulator that we were using to interact with the VS Omni. This problem 
provided an excellent learning opportunity for debugging hardware issues, though eventually we were able to boot the board successfully by making slight modifications to it. We saw an opportunity to expand the project to a hybrid hardware-firmware system by starting to design a test fixture. In this figure, you can see one of the most valuable tools to test engineers, a bed of nails. With this system, a technician would simply insert the PCBA and run the software which performs a test, a functionality which will be necessary anyway. This leaves us with the challenges which lay ahead of us in the spring. I will be focusing on implementing the firmware and providing a rigid test structure for it. I'll also be working on making sure to keep an excellent documentation so that anyone who approaches the resulting firmware can easily understand it. Then I'll be testing and benchmarking the system to determine any functionality that can be added. And now I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce Jaron, uh, and he'll be talking a little bit more about the hardware aspects of this project. Thanks, Beckett. As you mentioned, I am primarily focused on the hardware side of this project, and our examination of the boards and noteworthy observation surfaces, an absence of essential components critical for seamless firmware implementation, leaving us with footprints. The rationale behind this lies in the operational efficiency of certain boards, which in removing specific components contributes to a reduction in the overall, overall product cost. However, this optimization strategy introduces a consequential challenge in the firmware integration process. The absence of key components such as the SD card slot and North Flash poses a procedural obstacle that impedes the seamless transmission of information to the microprocessor. This will require a process of implementing the boards with the necessary components needed to implement the firmware to the microprocessor. One thing I noticed with the boards is that all the boards are missing components that are crucial in order to implement the firmware and we just see the footprints. One challenge we encountered pertained to the North Flash. To incorporate the North Flash into our board, six testing points were required, leaving no choice but to solder a pin header for each point. However, a notable issue emerged during this process. The pins proved to be large rendering them incompatible with the testing points. Consequently, upon soldering, the pins either consist consistently fell off or in instances where they appear secure exhibited vulnerability to displace the copper from the via upon slight force. This situation posed a potential concern as it could lead to the unplanned pulling of copper from the via resulting in a loss of electrical connection. For the process of the external PCB design, I had to implement the necessary parts that would be compatible with the Omniboard. I made, I made sure the BS were the necessary size for the pogo pins to fit. A pogo pin or a spring loader pin is used for the improved durability over other electrical contacts. It will be used for board-to-board -board connectors. We made plans to implement the necessary components to the external board. The parts that we are going to implement will be the North Flash, in a micro SD card connector with an electrostatic discharge suppression. For the micro SD card slot, I followed the schematic from Hayward. It had a part number and I had to compare it with multiple micro SD card slots and pick down one that matches the schematic. From the schematic, I followed the necessary steps in order to operate it. Since this is an external PCB, the testing points will have to satisfy the size in order to have that po a pogo pin. This is the schematic for the electrostatic discharge suppression. This will be protection to components on our board. <clears throat> this is how it looks on the board. As you can see, the main job of electrostatic suppression discharge on a PCB is to provide a pathway for the discharge of el static electricity away from sensitive components, preventing damage. The Cena diode will be a voltage reference and it will be turn on if it exceeds the threshold voltage, creating a path to ground. Electrostatic discharge can reach up to 20 kilovolts, which could endanger electrical components. For the future, we will have a 3D printed bed of nails fixture with the external PCB incorporated to improve the speed of implementing the firmware. 
we will have the completed framework for diagnostics, but we will have an application programming interface for other hardware products. A huge thank you to our technical director, Russell Buckley, David Oliveira, and Dr. Sunak.